Yeah, good evening, Albert. Thanks for having me on your program. Yeah, I think this one looks better and brighter. Can you hear me, sir? Can you hear me? Should I just talk about the Edo situation? The problem is I'm not hearing you. Okay. If you want me to talk about the Edo situation, I think I will just go ahead without much ado. You know, it's quite unfortunate to find ourselves in a situation like this, where um, one man, Adam Sushumole, wants to run Edo states the way you run a kingdom. We don't think he occupies any traditional position like that of the upper of Benin or Otaru of Aochi, where having left government, he still wants to call the shots. He was recently suspended as the national chairman of the APC. And unfortunately for him, both at the High Court and at the Court of Appeal, he lost. So he now wants to take the place of a government as against the already established government at the federal, headed by Buhari, and at the state level headed by Godwin Obaseki. Just this evening, I heard that Adam Zoshomole mobilized some persons to his ward, and that the so-called persons they've put together as a ragtag ESCO has lifted the suspension. This is very unfortunate in a democracy. The Court of Appeal has ruled. He went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court is yet to hear his appeal. So I don't know if the people he met in his village are new justices of the Supreme Court he has appointed. Because I remember that when he was inaugurating the panel to screen aspirants for the office of governor of Edo State, he arrogated to himself as chairman of the National Working Committee that of the Supreme Court from where appeals will terminate. It's only a former dictator like Louis Napoleon the 14 of France, who said, L'etat c'est moi, I am the state that could have done that. So it's very unfortunate. And I think the earlier the Nigerian government called Adam Zoshomele to order, the better. Because I've always said it, and I'll say it again, Adam Zoshomele is a clear and present danger to Nigerian democracy. Until he's caught to order, we'll continue to have the kind of crisis we are having, and that was the same crisis that led to the fall of the First Republic in the Western region. Edo State is a state that naturally should not have this kind of crisis. What we have is just a storm in a teacup. We're having an election, so it is not an invitation to anarchy, but it's an invitation for the electorates to decide who they want. The governor joining PDP was something that the people demanded. Having been disqualified at the BS of Adam Sushomele, the people now said, if APC have made their platform 
worthless, why not try a party that we know, which is PDP? And you can see the grants one support the governor has had within the last 24 hours on the social media. And I think this is one of the beauties of democracy. Thank you. Do I didn't hear your question, but I will say moving forward, the joining of forces of Gordon Obaseki, his supporters, and a ruling part, a once ruling party in Edo, because I remember when we went back to the part of democracy in 1999, precisely on May the 29th, a government came into place at the federal level headed by a PDP president and at the state level by a PDP governor. And how many years down the line? About 21 years down the line, another PDP government will be installed in those states after this election, by the grace of God, on the 12th of November, 2020. And as a prelude, Gordon Obaseki is governor of Edo State as a PDP governor. So this is very remarkable for watchers of Nigerian democracy. It explains that the motto of the PDP, which is part of the people, is in line with what Governor Obaseki has only said, that it is the no people that will decide who will be their governor, not a godfather. So godfatherism, by the grace of God, will be buried on the 19th of September, where all Edo people will come out to elect their governor. And of course, we know that man that will be elected, the sitting governor of those states, Gordon Obaseki, based on the way he has performed. There's no sector Obaseki has not touched. Is this sports? We have a, an international standard stadium, Mugbe Stadium today, that will be hosting the sports festival. Is he helped? You see the way we have responded to COVID-19. Edo State was the very first state to build a health facility from the scratch. In less than two weeks, a health facility was built by the Edo State government. And we have about four or five isolation centers, plus the testing facilities, which of course is in three different areas. The PCR, people come from all parts of the country to do their tests in Edo. And this shows the sterling performance of Godino Baseki in that sector. I will not talk of our new power plant that will supply electricity to public buildings and power all our street lights. In terms of security, we've never had it this good. You talk of infrastructure, Edo State is a constant construction site. The flooding problem we've always had, the governor has been able to put in all the necessary drainage facilities at Tessa Mill, Ekewa, and all those catchment areas that perennial flooding, flooding has always affected. So I can go on and on. Is it job creation? Is it youth empowerment? And importantly, the agbaros are no more on our streets. Without being told, Benin City is wearing a new look. Those that have visited Benin during the time of Adam Zoshomole, they know the difference. It is not just for you to say you are tarring roads, but there should be some form of sanity. There should be some form of decency in the way people relate one with another. Go to Ring Road. We know what we wear like Five, four, five years ago. But when you see the way things are done across our various urban centers, Aochi, Bini, and Ekoma, you will know that the civilized the man baritone. has gone. The baritone, can you hear me? I can hear you very well. Oh, yes, you. yes, yes, yes. Finally, finally. That is my boss, barista, Andrew Emata D. Asaka, no Sonia Power One of Edo Politics. <laughs> Thank you, Abbott, for yeah, having so, me. Sir, now, I, I'm going to start my questions all over again because uh, I was actually having issues with my network. People are trying to call me. A lot of uh, those all over the world, uh, those in diaspora, they want to know what's going on. They want to know what's happening. Now, tell us, Obaseki's defection, why did Governor Obaseki decamp from his party, his former party? He was the leader of APC in Edo State. Why did it have to leave the APC to the PDP? 
Why? What happened? Why did he, he try to manage the crisis in the party? Thank you so much, Albert, for your question. Um, good evening to our viewers. It's great being one of Albert's guests this evening. I will start by saying that our governor has done so well that whenever issues like this come up, he normally goes back to the people. He has a Twitter handle. And after his disqualification, unconstitutional disqualification, I say unconstitutional because Section 177 sub D of the 1999 Constitution is not very clear on what is required for you to be a governor. It talks about the basic qualification, which is school certificates, SSE. And you know that our governor does not just have school certificates. You also have what you call HSE, which is advanced level. He didn't stop there. He went to Nigeria's premier university, University of Ibadan, obtained a degree in classics. He didn't stop there. He went to an Ivy League institution in the US to obtain his master's. These institutions are there. And even the University of Ibadan, when Oshomole was trying to disparage his image, before he even went for a screening, University of Ibadan wrote to say, this man graduated from our university. He did very well that even after he left, we now had to invite him as a sitting governor of Edo State to deliver our alumni lecture. That lecture mm. is normally delivered by men of integrity. Mm. And the governor, because of his track record, was invited specially to deliver that lecture. So wow. you cannot compare that man with such a very heavy track record with Oshomole, who only has a history of being a tailor. And because mm. tailor did not favor him, he now went into unionism, and because of the kind of mouth he has, he became NLC president. Mm. I remember in 2006, when he became a member of the Labour Party, the same Oshomole went to APC, uh, the dead AC. He didn't start off with AC. He went into an alliance, because he knew that if he went to the Labour Party, he would not have even won his world in Uyamo. Mm. And that is where joining another party started from. He didn't start today. Mm. And you remember that he didn't win that election through the popular ballot. People stood by him. I thought people stood by him. Mm. He has forgotten that history, which is still very fresh in the memory of Edo people. Oh, he said no to God for that reason. No man is God. But I'll remind you about in 2009, when he had that one by one vote rally, because he's a man that is an antithesis of what he says, he invited IBB, the man that announced June 12, 1993 election, as a special guest of honor. Wow. For those of us who knew him back then, we were not surprised when, on the same June 12, the first time Nigeria will be celebrating Democracy Day on that day of Nigerians' democracy, the day that we remember how we came all out to vote according to our conscience in 1993, this same mm. Oshomo qualified the sitting governor mm. because he felt that the party APC belongs to him and nobody can call him to question. Members of the National Working Committee were all appointed, I mean, the ones that are with him were appointed by Oshomo unfortunately. Mm. So mm. when you have a situation like that, there is bound to be anarchy. So the governor felt if the APC cannot call the Shomala to order, it's better he goes to a more responsible party where there's law and order. He didn't just take that decision. He kept on consulting. He reached out to some of his brothers in the South South, brother governors in the South South. Eventually, when the people now insisted he should go to PDP, he didn't just go into PDP. He asked, he sought the opinion of the leaders of the states both tr traditional and religious. And even when he wanted to now take that final decision, he went to meet Mr. President because he's a man that respects constitutional okay, now, uh, 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 Mr. Emata, we actually come to that, to that uh, of uh, the, his meeting with uh, the president. Now, you are, you, you are basing your argument on the fact that the, the APC is no longer organized. That is why he had to leave the party because of Shomole, now assume the position of the, the, N, the NWC, the, 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 the NEC, the, the state party chairman, the world chairman. Now, can you tell us, uh, we, we saw a picture 
of Mr. Governor. His Excellency Governor Gordon Obaseki. We saw the day uh, a picture of him presenting his uh, interest and nomination form to the president. And we also saw on, me, uh, uh, on the internet, on newspapers, on, uh, on social media, that President Muhammad Buhari endorsed Edo Governor and, uh, and his uh, counterpart, Odo Governor, for a second term. Are you saying that, uh, that the president couldn't prevail on the leadership of the party? To 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 wow. to give the numbers a key right yeah, of please, first refusal about the TV program live program so please. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh oh, barrister, we are still here. We are here with you. The barrister. Uh huh. I have a power blackout problem, but if you can hear me, I will continue. Yes, we please. can hear you. Yes, we, we can. We can hear you, sir. We can hear you. No, the, the question is, is is Oshomole bigger than the, than the president? No, is is Oshomole bigger than the president of the country? Are you saying that the president could not prevail on Oshomole to to do his bidding? I think I will quickly say that Albert, it's quite unfortunate that. We have a situation where Oshomole has now taken the role of a man that even Mr. President cannot call to order. Remember that even when he was removed initially, he went into an agreement with Mr. President that for him to be returned as national chairman, he must respect constituted authority. He must ensure that the governors of Ondo and Edo are given rights of first refusal. Yes. And if there's any form of um, antagonism within the party as a result of that offer of right of first refusal, that the primary process should be free, fair, and credible. And even before the screening started, he had a meeting with Mr. President where these things were re-emphasized. But true to type, Oshomala went against everything that he gave Mr. President as assurances. And that was mm. why when he was finally kicked out by the Court of Appeal, most of us were not surprised. Because mm. a man of his caliber, you don't trust such persons. You know, when a man like Oshomala, who has no basic education, because when you look at him, he does not have primary seats, he does not have school sets. The only thing he has is his training as a tailor. <laughs> Though when he was governor, he could not even put a person industry in Edo. In mm. Cross River, where we have a professor, I had then put a garment factory. But Oshomole, who is a tailor, could not at least cite something like that. So a man like that cannot be trusted because his own constituency does not even recognize the existence of his constituency. So a man like that is a threat to democracy. Mm. Unfortunately, I hear that this evening something strange happened. I mean, today, it happened today, that they went to his ward. No, you know, we're, we're, actually, we're actually coming to that, Barista. Hey, let me let me reserve that. Now, now uh, you've explained everything. Oshomole believed that he's above the party. He's above uh, the, the president. He, 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 can, he can't listen to anybody. He's the neck. He's the NWC. He's the party. He's the state party chairman. He's the world chairman. Yes. Now, it's it's everywhere. It's in the public domain that uh, His Excellency Governor Opaseki has decamped to the People's Democratic Party, the PDP. And we also have People arguing that the government made aspirants in the PDP that are also uh, that are running for the governorship seat, Hello? and so, some believe that uh, the governor Hello? is coming late. Yeah. That the governor is coming late into the party. I'm coming. Yeah, sorry, sir. I had yes, a call. Uh, we also uh, there are still people that are still arguing that the governor came late to the party. We uh, the party has some. Uh, Aspirant, about three to four aspirants that are, that are on ground, that have been working, that have been trying to drive their ambition. Now, what is Governor Baseki's chances in clinching the, the PDP ticket? Tell us. I can tell you that as a man of the people, Governor Baseki has 99% chance of clinching the ticket. Wow. I had that singular honor of following him to pick his membership card at the state secretariat of the PDP. And I could see the joy in the eyes of members of the party. It was Liberation Day, not just for the people of Edo, 
but for the PDP, because you know, for 12 years now, they have been out of power. Mm. And the same Oshomale who took away the reins of power from PDP has handed back the reins of power to PDP. So nothing could be more fulfilling. I remember this same Oshomale has donated eight states that were previously controlled by the APC to PDP. He was planning to donate a dough. Then the governor said, why would I allow like this man donate my, part, my, my, my mandates given to me by those people to the PDP? Is it not so far I got there so that he would give me indirectly? And that's what the mm. governor did, being a politician. Because wow. Oshomale had a secret alliance with two governorship aspirants of the PDP that with the crisis is creating, if the governor wins in September under IPC, the Supreme Court will give it to PDP. We are aware we have mm. security reports on that. And you can wow. see the present opposition of some persons against the governor's membership of PDP. If they said Ize Yamu, who is a member of EPM, can enter their fold, why can't Gordon Obasaki as a sitting governor, on the invitation of Edo people, we invited him to come into PDP. He didn't say he would go to PDP. He wanted to remain in the APC. Over one million Edo people said no. Those abroad said no. We're not PDP. PDP is a party that have learned from their mistakes. APC is under one man. We don't want one man party. We don't believe in an autocracy. We believe in democracy. And that is why the governor decided to join PDP. And I assure you, he's a man of democracy. He believes in democracy. He went before the screening committee today as governor. He was screened by the PDP. Mm. Before that, he went to the procedure under the APC constitution. First, they applied to his ward chairman, where he picked his card for a waiver. The matter went to the local government, uh, ESCO. It went to state. The zonal approved. National Working Committee looked at his application. They approved. Then the NEC, which is now a member of, gave the final approval for him to contest. And if he goes into that primaries this coming week, you can be sure of the outcome. Because okay. the delegates are waiting for the governor. They are waiting to give him their mandates. Mm. And here the okay. sound is Okay, uh, Barista, I want to thank you very much. Uh, you are you are actually depositing this EP. Uh, you are uh, the, the reason I try to do this broker because you are live there in Abuja. We are here yeah. in the door. We are holding the ground here. You are with yeah. Mr. Governor, His Excellency in Abuja, uh, perfecting all the arrangements to make sure that uh, uh, the, uh, we don't have uh, agbaros back to our street. We don't yeah. have uh, agbaros beating our market women, beating our bus drivers. We don't have. Uh, 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 CDA is back to our communities. Sir, we have on, yes. uh, on Facebook, as we, as, as we speak, we have 1,600 people watching. On YouTube, uh, we have uh, 700 and we have over 700 people watching. On YouTube, these people, 95% of these people are adults. They are, they are adult voters, residents, they don't they, they are also adults in the diaspora. Many of them, Many have called to say they are just waiting for them to leave the ban on, on flight so they can fly down. They want to be part of the decision making. They are coming down to vote. They are coming down to mobilize. For those that cannot come, they are already reaching out to their family members back home to say, if you want, if you want me to continue to pay a school fees, you want me to continue to, continue to send you money, you must start campaigning for governor. God will never say a pass a key. Now that Governor Basaki has been screened by the uh, by the PDP screening committee. He has been granted a waiver himself and his admirable deputy governor, right honourable Philip uh, Shuaibu. Sir, we still have some pockets of individuals in PDP that believes that the party structure is controlled by by a major by an aspirant who also has from the governor's local government, all right, though, uh, uh, Honorable Osaibobo, uh, Honorable Ogba, I'm used to Osaibobo, you are, because this is the lead, he's my leader, and, uh, and he's, he's one of the people actually encouraging us to fight for what belongs to us. They are going to believe that Honorable Ogbede, Omoregi Ogbede Yama, control the bulk of the delegates in the... In Oredo, I'm not sure if he controls delegates in other local governments or other uh, territorial district. There is still this fear that if he doesn't step down for the governor before the Thursday primaries, that it will be difficult for the governor to fly. 
under the PDP. What's your take on it, sir? I will start by saying that the PDP is a leadership party. Okay. The PDP was formed in 1999. I had the privilege of being one of the pioneers of the PDP. Mm -hmm. I don't remember if Obede was around there. Maybe it was America, in America or somewhere, you know. But I can tell you that Obede Yama is a very good chap. But I know that uh, there's a particular governorship, uh, hopeful in the EPM, who has been trying to manipulate him. And I believe he's an adult man that we bow to reason. Members of his family have advised him that you are in the House of Reps. The governor is the leader of the party. He needs a second term to continue his developmental strides. There's need for you as a younger person to build forces with the governor. You don't want a situation where you go into this election, he defeats you, and you have some bad blood feeling that, oh, you were, I mean, nobody will accept victory these days, especially when you go against an incumbent. The leadership of the party are having consultation. One of them, uh, I don't want to mention his name, by Monday, we make his position known. His uh, media people have already said that he will be making his statement and we can tell the outcome of what he will say on Monday. And of course, uh, the man we call the rice man, he's my friend and brother. Rice man knows that uh, he has gone and come back, gone and come back in terms of his membership of PDP. So when you go and come back like that, there's this tendency of you coming all out and you discover mm -hmm. that He's also a friend of some of our people in the APC, and they're also talking to him. But you know the beauty of democracy? You negotiate. When you negotiate, you make amends, you continue negotiation. You don't stop negotiating. And I think the governor, as a democratic person, a man that believes in democracy, will continue to negotiate with these people. They are his brothers. Whether from Edo Central or Edo South, we are all one. It's a united party. That's why the symbol of the PDP is umbrella. That umbrella will accommodate Obede Iyama's interest. It will, it will accommodate the interest of Rice Man. It will accommodate the interest of Gideon Ihine. And at the end, I expect them, when, by the grace of God, the governor is elected to fly the party flag, to remain within the umbrella. They have all abandoned brooms in the past, with the exception of Gideon and uh, Obede Yama, who have never been members of the APC. Rice man has abandoned the broom before, so we don't expect him to go back to the broom. So whenever they have reasons, as I was saying earlier, whenever they have any reason or reasons to um, leave the party, if for any reason that they choose to leave the party, they should bear in mind that you don't leave a house you are planning to build or you have been building. Okay. The governor definitely okay, uh, will win. You know the governor yes, will win. Uh, uh, Barista, barista, uh, you use, barista, you use a word that uh, negotiation is ongoing, that the yes. governor is, is currently negotiating with uh, with um, this uh, 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 aspirant who are also running, who are also running for the governorship uh, in in our party, the PDP. When you say negotiation, is it that the governor is offering them money or the governor? Because uh, I don't even believe that. Uh, the way can see governor has always vowed that I don't post money, uh, he will not share it with politicians. Now, are they asking the governor for money? What are they asking for? What is what is what is the basis? What is the basis behind this negotiation that you just mentioned? I just said something. I said the governor as a person cannot muzzle other aspirants. He believes that because let me give you an example of what I mean. When We've, we've always had aspirants that when they don't win in the primaries, they will leave the party. The governor does not want a situation where he bypasses all the aspirants and talks to the delegates because he's a man that Edo people want. And these delegates belong to communities where the governor has impacted positively. A whole lot of persons have spoken to these delegates. And I can tell you confidently that these delegates are willing to elect the governor as the flag bearer of the PDP. Just recently, you know what he did for the various local government chairmen of PDP. And apart from the fact that, you know, the government naturally will show them some form of respect. And, uh, you know, when you don't regard leadership, no matter the level, you are bound to suffer the consequence of that action. And that is why even when the government wanted to leave, everybody said they would leave with him because he's a man that respects leaders. Is a man that believes in leaders. 
There's a difference between respecting leaders and one leader who calls himself Godfather. And that is not what the governor will encourage. Even joining the PDP as a leader of a party, he will go in, he will come in, he has come into this party, the PDP, with his de democratic credentials. As leader of a party, he will consult. You remember when he was to appoint his special assistant and senior special assistant, who we are part of, he went across the, 19, the, the uh, 192 wards, 192 wards, to pick all his political aides. And I believe with that kind of approach to governance, he will naturally talk to his brothers who are aspirants, co-aspirants. He will not just say, okay, I know the delegates, so let me bypass the aspirant. So when I say negotiate, he's trying to have that relationship. They were opponents, but they are not members of the same party. He's not going to ask for more primaries as the EPM would do, and they end up getting nothing from it. He will talk to them. He will make them see why he has a better deal for Edo people, because he's the one currently there as governor. He's interested in that seat. It is done everywhere, even in American politics. Negotiation is allowed. Instead of going up with arms, dialogue, that's the word, dialogue. Okay. Uh, if, dialogue, if dialogue so if I talk of dialogue, it means that you reduce the number of aspirants in a way that you will now have maybe the governor and one or two aspirants running, or even you may even see that at the end they will just okay, let's allow the governor to continue. Okay. And I probably will get there. But the governor is ready for the primaries. Okay. Very, very uh, much ready uh, for the primaries. Uh, Barista, uh, Avatar, we still have over 2,000 people uh, watching us live on both platforms, uh, Facebook and YouTube. And they are very, very happy uh, with the way you are, you are dishing out information, with the way you are analyzing this whole um, issue. Uh, we've, been seeing, we've, been seeing, uh, we've been seeing stories on social media especially from members of our former party, uh, APC. Uh, we've been seeing comments, we've been seeing posts that uh, the, P the leadership of uh, our new party, uh, the PDP, and some aspirants in the PDP are asking the governor to pay them $8 billion. Is it true that the governor is, is paying the PDP leadership and some of these uh, aspirants $8 billion? To get the ticket? I will say that is absolutely false. <laughs> because if money was paid, the governor would have been given that ticket that they now say he has paid for on the platter of gold. Yes. Right? And funny enough, there have been series of stories here and there. The PDP have told the governor, we are a democratic party. Even if anybody wants to play middleman and say bring money, don't give anybody any money. You are the governor mm. of Edo State. We want you to develop Edo with Edo people's mm. money. Even mm. the delegates, what you need to do is carry them along. You are the leader of the party. Your mm. government should accommodate the interests of PDP members because mm. you want to go into an election. So give them positions in government so that they can mm. function. They can offer whatever ideas they have for the good of Edo people. And I don't think any money has been given to anybody. It's not like in the APC where we heard that 500 million was given for just a mock primaries of EPM, which is not even an organ of the APC. But I don't mm. think what they are saying is true. 8 billion. Even the other state cannot even boast of 8 billion as IGRO. So that mm. is very false. Very, very false. It's market. Okay, uh, uh, it's market uh, That's what it's called. it's not easy to, to catch you. You know, you are always on channels. You're always on AIT, you're always on this national TV. And right. we are glad we are having you today, at least. Uh, and those all over the world are watching you. If we have 2,000, uh, over 2,000 people watching you live, I'm sure that in the next 24 hours, over 100,000 and those all over the world and other Nigerians who are interested in what's, in the, in, in, in what's happening in Edo, we have access to this information. Sir, another question that uh, we are want to ask you today, sir. Did you decamp? Are you, are you not a member of, did you, are you among those that moved from the former party to, to the PDP? Did you follow the governor to the PDP? I will tell you very clearly 
my intention. My intention is to pick the umbrella when I get back to Benin because I followed my boss to pick his card. I'm not going to decamp in a very small way. I have friends, I have followers. We are going to our ward in Ego to pick our membership cards. And we are okay. going to go there, whether rain or shine, because rain may fall. So we need an umbrella to go there. And if the sun is hot, we would also take our umbrella. It explains mm -hmm. that we are in a party that has an umbrella that is big enough to accommodate all the interests. Students, workers, market women. And importantly, the Agberos that would come into PDP will come born again because there's no more Agbero in those states. Okay, sir. So, um, I'm, my, sir. I'm a member uh, of PDP in spirit, but physically, I'll be joining the PDP next week. I wanted my oh, boss to make the move. He has made the move. And funny enough, if you look at PDP, most of us are PDP, right? I told you in 1990, when the party was formed, I was one of those that started off with PDP. I have not decamped. Have you ever seen a man to come out of the camp? In the last elections, I remember I supported Atiku based on what I felt at that time. And the reason why I'm supporting the governor is not because I'm his political aide, it's because the man has done very well. Gordon Obasaki is a movement. He's not just a candidate, but he represents a movement of Edo people by Edo people and for Edo people. I don't want to mention the things he has done, which Edo people are aware of. There's no human being who has conscience. Seeing a man perform this much, who want to go against his re-election. I'm a Christian now. I don't need to do what is not right before God. It would be a sin to see good okay. things and do anything against the things that the governor is doing. Yes, uh, Barrister Andrew Emata. We have been seeing, uh, we, have, we have been seeing posts on social media. We have been seeing posts on the mainstream media. We have been hearing Exodus movement, Exodus movement, almost every progressive in the former party, APC, have moving with the governor to, uh, to the PDP. This Exodus movement, uh, we, we saw that not all the commissioners, all the council chairmen, all the SSA follow the governor to the camp yesterday. What is happening? Are they going to the awards to the camp? Are they are, are some reluctant in, in following the governor to his new party? Or this Exodus movement is just uh, a social media? Are people really moving from the, the, the APC to PDP? I can tell you confidently that when the governor decided to join the PDP, he didn't make it public. He just said it at the villa, right? That he, he has resigned his membership of the APC. That was what he did at the villa. And for four days, our governor was without a party. People were laughing that the governor is partyless and the rest. But because he's a very strategic person, he just quietly went to pick his card. Some of us got wind of it just few hours to that time. I would join him. Otherwise, if the governor was to join the PDP and it came out to the media, I don't think Ogwet Stadium would have been big enough for that event. Mm. Imagine his one million and more supporters. I'm not talking of those that will vote for him, but the people that come out whenever he comes out. He now gave that directive that I'm coming so-and-so time, so-and-so place. Hey, pa, nobody for go work that day now. Ma talking for mm. pitching English. Nobody for go markets that day. Mm. Nobody for go fight. Because he's a man of the people. So mm. coming to your question, the commissioners naturally are with their boss. Members of the House of Assembly naturally are with the governor. You see the number of local gov government chairmen that have moved into the PDP with their councillors. It's mm. like a tsunami, a political tsunami. The governor wants a situation where people will be moved by their conviction. Yes. He has not given any instruction because we have a COVID-19 gazette which allows for social distancing. So if there's any statement we're from actually, the government... We're actually coming to that. No, we are looking at crowd control. The mm. governor is a very decent person. He didn't even go with his deputy. He went alone. The deputy went alone because the crowd that would have taken there would have violated the law passed by the governor himself. Because he's a man that believes in the rule of law, he does not want to do anything to jeopardize ongoing efforts in combating this pandemic, COVID-19. So we no, are not... Vice Armata, Vice Armata. 
hourly into the PDP. And the membership of PDP, the last time I checked, do you know that PDP members are now saying show? We never knew that those people love politics this much. Oh. Because the number wow. of persons that have joined PDP in the last 24 hours, the number is in the thousands, you know? And imagine yeah. how the election will be. Election yeah. day, I assure you, yeah. the number of voters that will come out that day, the world will know that democracy has come to stay in a dose state, and the party is the PDP. Power to the people. Barista, Barista Amata, thank you very much for all your uh, analysis. Now, you've taken us to another area that, that I was actually re reserving for for the last uh, uh, discussion of this show. Yes. We are seeing on social media, we are, we, are, we are seeing some posts, people taking pictures and saying uh, the COVID-19 regulations was uh, defied yesterday. Thousands of people followed the governor. I was privileged to be in the governor's convoy from government house to the secretariat. I was shocked because before we left government house, there was someone that was always coming around to tell us that we're just hanging around to say, the governor does not want crowd. The governor does not want people to follow him. If you want to decamp, go to your ward, go to your local government, don't follow the governor. While the man was doing that in government house, I saw some people that went, went to the Abeki to follow up to go anywhere they go today. Because at that point, they were, I was among them. I was among those saying, I beg you, because at that, at that very particular point, we were not sure if the governor was going to PDP, to AA, to SDP, but they said the man was moving. We saw cars. And to my greatest surprise, when we got to, when we got to the PDP National, uh, PDP State Secretariat, we saw thousands, or even before we got there, as I was shouting four plus four, bus drivers were turning, road users were turning, Rest of them, we are moving straight to the secretariat. What happened? What happened yesterday, sir? Why the crowd? Did the, did, did the government mobilize people to the secretariat? There's what you call spontaneous reaction, right? Okay. Yes. It was spontaneous. Oh, wow. The government never wanted people to be part of that process. His commissioners mm. were not aware. I mm. remember I was one of those persons who got wind, and I had to rush there on my own. Getting there, mm. I noticed that PDP members who knew of it were there. But because the government had set in motion the protocols that must be followed, most persons were not allowed to go upstairs, right? Mm. But a situation mm. where you have that kind of crowd, there was crowd control. People were put in different places. Like there were some persons upstairs who did not witness the governor coming downstairs because they insisted that they must stay upstairs just because of our gazette that stipulates the number of persons that should be in a place at a time. Remember that the room where the governor, the hall where the governor did his declaration, people were not allowed to go in. It was just journalists. The yes. journalists we have are on official assignment. You know, they are under essential services, right? So it's difficult to prevent these persons. And they were all wearing face masks. If you notice, they were all wearing face masks because... Easing these COVID-19 restrictions requires certain things that must be met. And I remember in the PDP Secretariat, they had certain facilities. They had hand-washing facilities. I remember I saw people having to use those facilities and even sanitizers. I was wearing my face mask. I even bought a specially customized PDP, I mean, with the uh, green, red, and white you know, design. And... I don't think those talking of the government violating the COVID-19 Gazette regulations, they are just being economical with the truth. I know my boss, he would not encourage breakdown of law and order. And I thank God that yesterday's event was a huge success. The people that came out were people on the streets, but the security people there controlled them in a way that they insisted that they should not come in with the governor. They were outside. You cannot prevent Edo people from saying hello to their governor. If the man was not a man of the people, would you have had that kind of crowd? No publicity was done. Nothing <clears> like uh, people know. The moment they heard governor was there, they came all out. Can you prevent something? I, I think I, I, I heard something yesterday when, when, when we got, got to government house. Yes. I heard the governor talking to uh, the leader of uh, uh, our leader in uh, Umode, uh, Honorable Charles Idausa. Yes. He was asking, he said, 
who mobilized people to the PDP secretariat? Uh, Honorable Charles Delta said nobody mobilized. Wow. That he actually sent a message to his people in the in his local government that if he sees anybody in the PDP secretariat, he, the person will be arrested. That the governor mm. said he doesn't want people to follow him to the secretariat. He said, but one thing the governor was not asking, why the crowd? Where were they from? The man has said PDP is a very organized party. Yes. That's if it was FPC, you will hear the Kabakas, the uh, the Kosu, the South yes. Osage, requesting for money for mobilization. True. So, uh, and that chance was not telling the government that if PDP, you don't pay people to attend political functions. Once they hear on EBS or when they get get wind of information about somebody coming to the party. They move, but in FBC, because the party was not really popular, it was the government that actually made the party popular. So sure. you need to mobilize people to move to the secretary. That, that now said, Governor, you are happy because before now, we've not been getting serious criticism from the, from the PDP. They've actually been supporting your government because of the fact that you are not sharing money. I also remember a, a PDP man telling me when I was in APC that about when I went there PD, when I went there APC and we went there PDP would we'll be the same because we heard that the governor is not giving you the full money. What we are seeing is roads, we are seeing development, so we are the same. Sir, the question I want to ask is this. Are you saying that the crowd that came there yesterday the people that turned up to welcome the governor, even when they were not, uh, even when they were not invited, are you saying that these thousands of people that are jubilating will translate to vote on the 19th of September? I can tell you, uh, my dear brother Albert, confidently, that adult people will come out in their droves, those who are registered, to vote in the man they want to continue as governor for another four years. These numbers you are seeing will multiply before the election day. Why will this happen? Because people want to ask themselves two questions. Has the governor done well? The answer, of course, is obvious, yes. Do we want him back for another four years? The answer is obvious, yes. And that is what will make a whole lot of persons come out to vote. All those areas that they could not pass, I mean, within the last four years, that you don't have good roads. Human beings live there. They have been dusting their PVCs, waiting for that day to come. Those teachers whose lives are better off with governor's transformation of education sector are dusting their PVCs. Those parents whose children now have access to the internet, even during this COVID-19, they have been learning at home, they have been dusting mm. their PVCs. Those market women that were oppressed by Kabakas and the others are dusting they are PVCs. Those people who built houses without molestation from CDAs are dusting their PVCs. So the number of people dusting their PVCs are in hundreds of thousands. For the mm. first time, we are going to see the number of people that will come. And they are not going, most of them are saying, we are not just going to vote. We are also going to defend our votes because wow. that is the beauty of democracy. Because mm. the government of the people by the people and for the people. It was Abraham Lincoln that said this in his Gettysburg Address. And for me, I've never had it this good. Having a governor that is so loved by the people. We are yet to find that kind of governor. It was only the time of Ali we had that kind of love. The time of Obamudia. Not the one that told a widow to go and die. We know our governor. Our governor is a man that is loved. 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 They love him. I don't Sir, know uh, the barrister, the barrister. Now we can't, we can't. I, I, I'm not sure we can say everything today because I have a lot. People are enjoying. I'm seeing the comment box. People are just hailing. We already have uh, one on Facebook. We already have 1,100 comments on on the on YouTube. We have over 800 comments. People are just commenting. They are typing for plus one talk back. Yeah. Two last questions, sir. Okay, sir. Now, 
Uh, there is a there is a gazette. There's a there, there's a law uh, uh, banning uh, mass gathering, and the, yeah. the the government is saying that uh, PDP cannot have uh, APC cannot have cannot have uh, cannot cannot have uh, direct primaries in a do because. Uh, they are going to, their plan is to hold the primaries across the 192 wards, which would not be okay for our people because of this, this COVID 19. And we are also getting information that the governor of Imo State, Senator Hope Uzodima, has vowed to fly down to Edo tomorrow, uh, on Monday, to conduct the APC uh, uh, primaries. What is the position of the government? I can tell you that even as we speak, we don't even know who is the national chairman of the APC that the government of Edo will be dealing with because the only one that is to our knowledge, based on the court's decision, clear judgment of, I mean, order of court, is Vito Gierdom. He has not told us that he has appointed a screening panel, neither has he informed us that they'll be having primaries in Edo on Monday because he okay. has said that everything concerning their primaries is cancelled. And that is mm. what they are those people to work with. We are not mm. an, a organized government. Nigeria is a democracy. Things should be done properly. And I must quickly mention that the substance that lubricates the wheels of democracy is the rule of law. We obey court orders. There are certain matters that have gone to court. They are yet to tell us what is the official position because Geodom has written to INEC. And we hear that some persons came together to appoint Hope Ozidima. I don't want to talk about how he became governor. We all know what happened at the Supreme Court. That judgment mm -hmm. is a precise judgment. And this same man wants to come into a dark territory to violate an existing law. He's a governor. He knows the implication of when you take laws into your hands. You want to come and conduct what looks like a general election. Even INEC is yet to take an official position. And you're insisting that you come to a door. We are waiting for him. Okay, sir. Sir, my last question is this. Uh, we saw uh, a post, uh, we saw articles pop up this morning from some national dailies and social media that uh, the leadership of a showboless uh, world in Estaco, in, in the Estaco West Water, uh, lifted a showboless uh, uh, suspension. And uh, uh, earlier this morning, uh, we saw a video of Oshomoles World Chairman, uh, 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 Mr. Stephen Ochawo, saying that, they, that uh, the executive are still in FPC, that they didn't defect with the government to the PDP. And this evening, we are seeing another post that uh, the same leadership have lifted the uh, Oshomoles suspension and Oshomoles will be resuming on Monday. What happened, sir? Tell us. Mr. Albert, I must quickly mention that uh, we have many signs and wonders on the social media. <laughs> well, yeah, the man that was uh, appointed Deputy National Chairman South by Oshomole, we heard of how he died this week, and he was also resurrected <laughs> by the same social media informants that said he died. <laughs> Though we hear that the man is on life support, but it turns out that a man who they said died, he's still in life support. So mm. when you hear a story like that, that Oshomole, who is at the Supreme Court now, for the court to reinstate him, has gone to a world escrow that we don't know of, and those people have lifted the suspension. Have they lifted the court order? That's the question you should ask about. We live in a democracy. We operate a constitutional democracy where the rule of law, as I said, is what lubricates our democratic order. It's a former chief justice of Nigeria, a Kanda Fatal Women, that said, in a situation where the rule of law is jettisoned, Anarchy becomes the sole beneficiary. Oshomala mm. should realize he's not president of Nigeria. He's not governor of Edo State. He's not a state actor. He has been suspended by his world esco. I was on TV yesterday on channels when the world chairman said Oshomala remains suspended. We are still members of the APC. These are the wow. people who are in court with him. And under the Evidence Act, when a matter is in court, you cannot conjure new facts. These mm. facts are known to law. They are known to reason. And if Oshomale has two heads, I have to go this way. You should go to the National Secretariat of APC on Monday. Whatever it says. Hmm. 
becomes his lot. Because Nigeria is still a, a country that is governed by laws. If he tries that, that would be a coup d'etat. And under Section 1, Sub 2 of the 1999 Constitution, he will be cited a treasonable felony. And that attracts life imprisonment. And if they call it treason, death, they'll, they'll shoot him like an enemy because Nigeria does not belong to him. He has carried his rascality beyond what any country will accept. Where will you? A Supreme Court gave judgment to Shomala said that judgment will not be ordered, will not be obeyed. You went to Supreme Court, your application was thrown out. You now went to your village and you said they've lifted your suspension. Who are you? Who is Oshomole? A tailor? You want to turn Nigeria into a banana republic? Mm. The problem is it is the kind of lawyers he has that have refused to tell him the truth. He has been removed. He was removed by his word. The court has confirmed it, both at the trial and at the appellate level. And we know the Supreme Court will not agree less with what the AP court have said, that if you have been suspended as a member of a party, you cannot be national chairman of that same party. It's like somebody who's from Kenya, he wants to become Nigerian president. You must first and foremost take up membership of a party. And when you lose your membership, all your rights and privileges will vaporize. If you know someone else stands today, he's not a member of the APC. Oshomala should go and join the Labour Party where he came from. So that Thank he can be their much. national chairman. Thank, Thank you very much, Barista. Thank you. Barista, in one minute, please. I want to, 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 to send a message to your former to your former uh, party members, the APC, and another no, message. I was, I was never a member of APC. I was working for the governor, who is an APC governor, and it was because of that I had some sympathy for APC. But it's okay, APC okay, now. Okay, what's your message? Okay. What's your let message? Me, let, me, to... let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. APC is sinking just the way the Titanic sank in 1911. Oshomala is the one that has taken APC beyond an iceberg of illegality. And the way APC is sinking now, they have lost how many states? Eight. I'm Eight. afraid that they are about to lose Ondo. A day will come, Oshomala will be the only member of APC, and that's what he wants, you know? Okay, now, what's your, what's your message to, to PDP members and PDP delegates in, in 30 seconds? The PDP, the PDP delegates are our brothers, and I will appeal to them to allow the governor to get their support. He's a man that believes in democracy. He said he has come to build the PDP. As a leader of the party, they should allow him to give leadership. PDP is back to Osadebe, and they will remain there for as long as they know people want them to be re relevant in the politics of our state. But be sure that with PDP, and Godino Basaki as a candidate. APC is bye-bye. It's bye-bye to APC. Thank you. Thank you very much, Barista Elwata. I'm sure we'll still bring you back because Edo people enjoy listening to you. They enjoy uh, watching you and they follow you a lot. I want to thank you. I want to appreciate you. Thank you for, uh, for granting us your time. Thank you for everything, for lecturing us this evening. We appreciate you and we thank you. And Thank those you. all over the world, uh, we will be bringing another of our brother in Abuja, who, who, who is a strong PDP uh, member, is one of our strong PDP youths, and he will be talking to us. Thank you very much, our barrister. Please, we are going back to the in the next five minutes, and we are bringing in our, 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 another of our political analysts who is, who is resident in Abuja. Thank you very much, barrister. God bless you. Yeah, cheers. Thank you, Thank cheers. you sir. Cheers, yeah.